hello, hello. Welcome to the JTM Community Podcast. I am your host, Jason Melvin. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are watching this, you already know who today's guest is. If you are listening, we'll get to that in just a moment. Of course, if you have any interest in touching base with me for advancement advising, you can do that through the website j-tm.community slash podcast. There's a bunch of different resources there. That's also where you can go to vote, submit your stories, feedback, questions. If we get enough questions for a Q&A episode, we will definitely be doing that as well. On the main page, there's additional resources for locally in the Mount Pleasant, Michigan area, as well as national resources. So give that a look if you have an interest there. Of course, the social media side of things, the Facebook is probably the most convenient for voting, engaging, um, getting your your voice heard and input and seeing what other people in the community um, are thinking, saying, and voting for as well. You can also check us out on Spotify if you want to listen, which it also plays on the main site and Facebook. And again, if you want to watch, you can check us out on YouTube. Last but not least is the TikTok content. You can check out our videos, but more importantly, it is the like section with amazing content creators for motivation, inspiration, human connection, and humor. Without further ado, we will dive into today's topic, which you all had voted for, which is the topic of trust with our good buddy, Will Squires. Thank you for joining me today, bud. Hey, thanks for having me back yet again. It's it's so much <laughs> fun. I, I, I love this, so I will... You will rarely ever hear me say no to you because I love this. So the, I think we we both get something um, out of this. There, there's always moments of growth for ourselves personally as as we do these for sure. Yeah, and I, I think that I think that giving the chance to to see the way that we change or the way we can kind of work through some of the things that we're talking about, mm-hmm. at least personally, yep, um, lets other people know that change is possible. So it's kind of nice to it's kind of nice to get that little insight, and then you don't feel like you have to do it all alone. There there are people out there to help. Yep. Um, Which is kind of the whole point of yeah, creating this community for sure. Exactly. The with today's topic being that of trust, when you think of that idea, what comes to mind? What does that mean for you? It's a couple things. Um, first, it's self trust. Do you trust in yourself, your own abilities, the things that you're capable of? Mm -hmm. Um, Do you trust in the group that you've set up around you? So your peers, friends, family. And then do you trust um, the capabilities of society or Mm -hmm. the the mentality of society? And um, two of those I have yeses for. The other one, not so much. (laughs) <laughs> um, but just, just can you can you always if you need something to fall back on, can you trust to have somebody um, come back you up? Can you trust to um, that if you call them that they're going to pick up and and like listen to you, or if they need uh-huh. you, are you going to be there for them? Yeah, That's, that those sense. are the first couple of things. Yeah, when I hear you describe it in that way, it makes me think of the idea of faith that you have faith in a person or or position or a situation or group of people that when needed, they will be there to help provide guidance or support or or whatever's needed for sure. Well, if you, if you think about it, they're, they're not exactly the same, but they share similar characteristics and trust. Yep. So, I mean, it, that's, it could absolutely be seen as, as such. So it just depends on how you look at it. Could it, I didn't even, it didn't even drop into my head about the the trust of, um, trust turning into faith at that time. So. Yeah, I think that faith is trust without evidence. I like that. I like that. The, I mean, that that's what makes sense to me, at least in this particular moment. Yeah. When I think of trust, I also agree. I think that there's in a lot of uh, avenues and aspects of life, whether it's spiritual or, or mm-hmm. could be work, uh, personal relationships, whatever it is, that faith definitely plays a role. Um, trust, I think, starts with the self because um, mm-hmm. we can, that, that sense of trust people th- use typically when they think of trust, they think of the other, right? Or whether somebody is worthy of trust. Exactly, yeah. Trust is something that you have or don't have. 
and that that's personally yeah. and in relationships it's not uncommon for somebody to have gone through a history of um, difficult or not trustworthy partners but now they're with somebody that they for all intents and purposes should trust but don't but don't yeah and it, it's the, it's the same with love yep. um you you cannot love other people unless you love yourself first you cannot truly love unless you love yourself first it, I, I i feel personally that it's the same with trust you cannot trust others truly and faithfully like you were talking about you cannot trust them to to be who they actually are unless you trust yourself because if you don't trust yourself you're hiding things from them you're hiding things from um society around yourself and it gives them a false identity of like who you are so it, it's already taking that trust away because you're not being who you actually should be sure the i think there there's two sides to that coin there's um not trusting as easily as the situation or the person uh, mm -hmm. quote unquote should be but there's also the flip side of um trusting too easily based on the conditions of, of a situation absolutely so let's start with the the idea of self-trust and then we'll kind of move uh outside the self so you were you were describing the idea of trusting kind, kind of starts with ourself and our own perception and how we operate in the world and if that is authentic and genuine then trust tends to kind of pair with that but mm -hmm. if we are i'm gonna be dramatic just for the sake of making it more black and white if we're lying right. cheating and stealing if you will right and that is the our because we're doing those actions that is our mind's um structure or or frame of perception so of course we're going to view other people as having uh jeopardized ethics or values making other people also less trustworthy because of how we operate right it's it's under it's under our own lens and we're trying to like we were talking about in a couple episodes last couple episodes is that you have a lot of people want you to go through things through their perspective mm -hmm. and expect you to think of it the exact same way they do, but it's, mm -hmm. that's not how life should be. You mm -hmm. can bring it to the table and share that and allow people to know what your perspective is. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with trust. You, you can hope people are acting a certain way and doing certain things and going to be a certain way around you and in your life. But until you share that with them, until you actually like divulge what you what your expectations of friends are or of um, loved ones or of just acquaintances, mm -hmm. nobody knows. And then they have to share that with you as well. If they just go, oh, OK, we'll do it your way. Then they're then you can already tell it's not a it's not a full trusting relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Where they don't trust that to be handled well or mm -hmm. they're fearful of your reaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. There's definitely a lot of dynamics at play there. When you were just talking about that, it uh, put an example into my mind and it's the idea of how primal the idea of trust is. So uh, mm -hmm. with canines, for example, to show uh, their trust and submiss submissiveness to essentially, I'm going to say an alpha wolf, right? They'll, just the alpha in general. It could, yeah. be, could be their owner, could be another dog. Yeah, just the alpha in general. And they'll uh, expose their artery, right? Mm -hmm. um, to to convey the tr that trust. They essentially expose a lethal attack to show uh, the, the trust to the pack there. And though we don't do that, right? I'm no. not saying like you should like expose well, your heart and give somebody a knife and say, Hey, I trust you. Right. Well, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with that. We I, please do. I, I feel we, I feel we do that in situations. We, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to love, mm -hmm. we trust so much with love because there's everything's been romanticized and fantasized mm -hmm. and you know, Oh, they're just going to fall in love with me and then everything will be perfect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your heart is ripped out of your chest. Sure. based on their actions and what they do because they're not a good person and you gave your trust to somebody that wasn't worth your time or effort or energy or love. Yep. Um, so we do the, we do the same thing and it's very easy in the human world to get burned, but be, bl mm -hmm. be able to blame it on other people except for ourselves. But you always have to come back and look at it and go, 
did I give that trust too quickly? Mm -hmm. Probably, probably. Yeah, there's, again, there's kind of two, two sides to that coin with a, with a third caveat is that there are people out there that are really good at manipulating people Mm -hmm. to get you to give that trust over. It's the whole premise of scams, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Cons and and whatnot is it's designed, uh, they're educated in in a way that they know how to manipulate people well. Um, My sister and I talked about this uh, a few weeks back based on some of her past relationships and Mm -hmm. the, some of the uh, qualities and skill sets of a narcissist uh, can key in and hone on to those particular things and those vulnerabilities and mold that in a way that it feels very, very supportive. Um, and then un- unfortunately, that can also further progress to isolation, abuse, domestic violence, and and so on and so forth. Yeah, a very, a very, a very high high chance that it could go towards submissiveness and then yeah. just always repeating and going back. We'll know. And that's what we always hear from um, people who give their trust in the love situation. A lot of is, but I love him, but he mm. punched you or, but she punched you or, but they did this to you or that to you, but yeah. they love me. They tell me they love me. Okay. So you're trusting their words and not their actions. I think that we have another, we have all these different avenues that we need to look at mm-hmm. and it's not just, it's not just what they say or what they do. It's everything else in their life. And if the, if nothing jives, mm-hmm. people need to be more aware. And I love how all the conversations we have kind of tie back in together because it is all about that perception. And if you give a good perception, people could, people will love you, but you could be a total jackass Yep, and yeah, just and- use your, use your abilities to manipulate and survive. Unfortunately, the world we live in is perception is king. And you can, despite what your actions show, Mm -hmm. if you can make, so again, we'll use domestic violence as an example, right? And uh, the trap that people often get in is the way they perceive it is very different than the reality of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a lot of things that that go into play. And a lot of that is intentionality. Oftentimes somebody is groomed to be in that position yes. of domestic violence. It's not usually, Hey, met you the first day, bam. Right. Um, no, it's from child childhood of their experiences through childhood and everything like that. Yeah. And even, even if you set that aside and it's just within a relationship with a single individual, mm-hmm. that individual will typically grow towards those things, towards those actions. They won't, essentially assault somebody from the get-go they'll engage them they'll um yeah they'll, they'll get them, them seduce them yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and they'll then get over them time, and then start 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 um slowly transplanting those those things with mm-hmm. i love you you know do this or you know why didn't you do this you love me do this it, it's it's very interesting to see how people use that trust and love as like a Mm -hmm. weapon against the people despite what a lot of um disney's shows and cartoons would say uh and i know me saying this is probably not as uh accepted uh, as people would want it to be but it's true is that love is not enough love doesn't overcome all things um, it doesn't overcome most things, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It can be a very pivotal role in those things. Love mm-hmm. can be a very pivotal function of trust, right? Um, yeah. But it, it's not enough. Right? No, it, it's not. And not. it's not just, I, I love how you use Disney because that's where a lot of people get that Disney princess thing. Like, yeah. oh, the woman falls in love with the guy that she met five minutes ago and saves her. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're married at the end of the movie. Sure. And they get this whole romanticized piece of it, but it's, mm-hmm. it's books, it's TV, it's everything else, not just what we, you know, the little movies that we watch when we're growing up as kids. And it's people that put those stories out there, but you're absolutely right. Love does not conquer everything because it keeps going back to, so you can still love a person. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you have to be with them because of the fact that they beat you. Yep. Um, no matter if it's man or woman, it, it, you, mm-hmm. you have to trust that they're going to do what's in your best interest. And I'm pretty sure beating you emotionally, subjecting you to 
um, oh, I mean, not just physical yeah. beating, but mental beatings sure. as well. I don't think that's something that anybody should, should trust that the other person is doing for their best interest. Yep. Which is where that, that idea of trust. And usually when we, we use that word, it sounds like a really good thing. And yeah. oftentimes it, it tends to be, I, I hope anyway, the, so let's start with the positive side, but difficult side, right? So, and that is coming from uh, trusting ourselves, which I think ties back to a, a lot of our conversations about uh, such as confidence, right? Mm-hmm. So confidence is built off of that idea of self-trust where you have done the things that have been challenging for you and you've learned and grown in competence to know that if something comes up, you, you can handle that. It's almost faith in the self. It, it's trust in your abilities to navigate something. It doesn't mean it comes easily, right. but that you, you are disciplined enough to do the things. You can engage with failure in a way that you'll learn and grow, you'll adjust and you'll compensate and be able to move forward. To me, that's where trust begins, right? So that is the the ingrained sense of trust. And as we learn that for ourselves and, and apply that to others in a healthy way, folks that maintain that same role or, or a similar role mm-hmm. to me is, are people that I, I begin to trust. And for, for me personally, everyone starts at a baseline. I don't not trust someone until they've shown that I shouldn't. So right. I, I essentially trust everyone. I don't trust everyone with my social security number or no. my banking info, right? I mean, right. that's just naive. But if I came across somebody, I'm going to be willing to like help them. And if there's reasons mm-hmm. for me to be a little more cautious, uh, given the times we live in, and I absolutely uh, am in that sense. And then, so for me, trust is is a baseline that everyone has. And the more that somebody displays that I can invest uh, a more intimate degree of trust than, than I do. And if they show me that I should uh, convey less trust than I do, I, I trust that people will expose themselves. I don't mean that in the sense of genitals. I mean that in the sense of who they are, their character. So if right. somebody uh, keeps canceling on me, I trust that that is a character of them right? That, that's not their characteristic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't like try to keep, I don't keep trying to force them to maintain those appointments. I no. I move on. If I loan money and that person doesn't pay me back, right? I trust that character and it can change and they could show me that it, it changes, but I, I trust the actions, right? right. E- even when I don't want to, and I'll throw my sister uh, under the bus because I've done it several times and Sorry. she's- <laughs> she is no, uh, she will have no hesitation here is scheduling to do things with them, right? Um, becomes difficult. Sometimes it's uh, disheartening, right? Because um, I want those things to happen. And, and sometimes it's out of their control and my control um, where no one is at fault. But it over time it, it takes a toll but i still it, it feels it that. feels that way it yep. feels that way absolutely and we ha- we have a we have a friend our, our friend garrett yep. um we've been trying to do certain things over the past you know 15 years that we've 16 years that we've known each other mm-hmm. and weather or family issues or things come up and it just never happens and we still have yet to go and do those things together because of the fact that every time we try something comes up and something happens. So it does give like, and it's mostly on my side because I lived on the other side of the hill. He lived in California. I lived in Nevada. And every time we try to plan something, it was during winter break Mm. and the snow would hit right when I needed to, or right when we were planning on going and doing something, Mm -hmm. couldn't make it over. Um, And then it just ended up never happening because we got super busy and got back into our normal routines when it got warmer. So, um, or the, or the thing that we wanted to do at the time, wasn't going on basketball games, whatever. Um, so I know he's probably got the same type of feeling about that is that it's, it's tough to, to lock me down into getting a, getting set up and going and do this because it hasn't happened in 10 years because we, we still haven't had to make, been able to make it work. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But, but um, the fact that like I go down there now that he's moved down a little bit further or a little bit closer and in, mm-hmm. in Nevada. So it's not as hard to get to go see him. I get to go hang out with him more. He gets to come up here and see me more. So you guys um, just hung out the other day. Yeah, we had, we hung out yesterday. And so we're trying to repair that, like that trust issue because it's like, okay, he's got family issues and stuff that I've got to deal with. I've got family things that I've got to deal with. And mm-hmm. we, we just have to understand and, you know, yep. we still keep working to, to make sure that we're, we still have a strong, you know, brotherhood. Oh, absolutely. And I think with that idea, um, it, and I don't mean this at a, at a hundred percent where this is, no. this is absolutely uh, faultless. When it comes to relationships, proximity makes it easy and mm-hmm. makes it convenient, right? There's difficulties that come the, the farther away from uh, somebody that you get. And I, I mean that quite literally. So uh, college students, right? Uh, students in general that are going to school, they make friends typically with the people that they're around. Yep. People. Dorm who, rooms. Yep. Our classes. Folks who are working, right? Mm-hmm. You typically um, befriend coworkers and colleagues. When those things shift or change and you're trying to maintain those relationships, what becomes the primary uh, destruction or growth is intentionality. Mm-hmm. It is in intentionally choosing to put in the effort to make the thing happen. Tracy and I have struggled uh, with this, not uh, towards each other, but in um, mutual relationships uh, Mm -hmm. with other folks is, and we've said this so many times, actually uh, other friends as well, is the, the idea or the expectation that we have at a baseline, we typically maintain those barring an emergency, right? Right. Um, like if I say I'm going to do the, do a thing by all means, like I, I'm going to do that thing again, barring an emergency, what we've noticed over time. Uh, and we actually, we were chatting about this the other day because it's changed a lot since we were younger. Right. So, uh, the trust in the people around you, uh, we used to know neighbors, for example, right. Yeah. Like neighbors, new neighbors, uh, people engaged it, oh, was the a, good old days. A, a neighborhood, a community, right. right? Um, and there was more intimacy there. And as we have gotten older, we've observed that that spread. Yeah, doesn't yeah. doesn't really exist. Um, yeah. It's more superficial and it's typically online and you people don't have the same commitment. Right. So people will, will operate with requests similar to saying hi. Mm-hmm. So if you're walking down the street and you say, hi, what's up? People aren't anticipating a response. They're not even necessarily looking for one. It's just a gesture. The, I treat it very literally. I do, not, I do as well. I, if I, I don't say, say hi, it if I'm I don't mean it. it. Yep. Uh, so if I say like, hey, Bob, how's your day? Like, but my intention is okay. to find that out, mm-hmm. right? And if he talks for three seconds or 10 minutes, like that's what I'm there for, right? Um, if I don't, have the time or I don't really care to know, I won't ask, um, which throws people off, right? Um, it, definitely, it definitely does. That's not like the, the, social, the social norm anymore. Mm-hmm. Going back to Tracy and I, we've come to the understanding that how we view things and like our commitments to others and like what we deem as friend qualities, mm-hmm. those things often aren't reciprocal but the ones that do it become much more intimate of friends yeah absolutely it's like it, that i it's like the idea of like hey blah, blah blah oh hey we should uh we should hang out soon right you really don't mean it so let's just not say that right if you don't mean it don't say it and i i've been i've done that a couple times where i've because i wanted them i was like yeah i, I actually my intentions were i really wanted to yeah um, but then when the time came or when it was time to make plans, I'm just like, God, I'm so busy, so tired. So this, so that just, mm-hmm. I can't right now. I'm sorry. And it's, I feel horrible because at times mm-hmm. I felt like I've let my whole, like, I've just been living my life and letting my, um, my work and how tired I am from that. Try to like mm-hmm. kind of take precedent over everything. Sure. Uh, which I'm getting better at, 
like letting go of that, but it's still, I have no doubt that it's, it's caused a, a few people in my past to, oh, sure. uh, to lose trust in me that the fact that I'm probably not going to be available whenever they, you know, call on me, but the people yeah. that, the people that know me and like you said, reciprocate that. And, and that I find that I, like I match up with where I want to reciprocate. And like, it's not a, a feel, it doesn't feel like it's hard to, or trouble to, yep. um, it's like you call, I'll answer. We'll talk. You call and need to help. I'll be down there and I'll do whatever we need to yep, um, figure it out. Yeah. Yep. The, and I think that's where we're really highlighting on the idea of, trust and the many levels of it and the closer somebody gets to us in an intimate level that trust typically will will go with that right and it, yeah, the, tr- the trust rises as the intimacy level in the relationship rises not don't get all crazy people out there you can have intimacy with people that aren't your partners but mm-hmm. um <laughs> yeah oh, well, everybody thinks that my sixth graders go and busy. Ew. And oh they think yeah it's like, that it implies you, you, you say sexual. oh you've got you say yeah. oh you've got a girlfriend and they're like ew and i'm like no she is a friend that is a girl shut like just leave it alone and and people <laughs> always go into that and they, they always think oh well you can't be friend no you give them more you give more trust to the higher the relationship wherever it is yep. and that shows how much you trust them and hopefully that is reciprocated if it's not then that person slowly slips down and slips out of your favor and moves out of your life. Hopefully Um, there's other people that just keep pounding that trust in there and going, no, I trust you're going to do the right thing sooner or later, 10 years later, Mm -hmm. me, um, 15 years later, borrowing money or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. still haven't done the right thing and, and done what they should have, or even said, thank you, or, you know, just the small little gestures. And that's, that's absolutely what fatigues a relationship mm-hmm. and, and fatigues a person in a relationship, uh, which is oftentimes who I end up seeing uh, in my office for a variety of reasons. Uh, and probably the most impactful thing when it comes to couple, couples and marriage counseling, right? Uh, and it's not always their own fault. It'll be, uh, so children are a big role into that. So a family um, has children the children become the priority which shouldn't happen they should become a priority it should it should be it's when you when you create a when you create a family your family takes second like you each person like my mother and father and stepmom and stepdads and all that stuff they take the side step Mm there they go to priority two it's my wife and i Mm -hmm. and then if when children come along it's us the children and the rest of the family Mm -hmm. you should never especially in america it should always be focused on you two the the two partners that are in it even if it's not marriages in the terms that people know it from the the old days it is you and your partner taking care of each other first and then your responsibilities for everything else it's almost it's almost it's almost like in a plane it's exactly like that Cover, yep. cover your face before you take care of your children because you have to be able to, yep. to do take that. care of everything and you can't do it if you're unconscious. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I, I would argue one step closer and that is you start with yourself. So even if it's, it's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With you and your partner, it's you, your partner, you and your partner, mm-hmm. and then it disseminates. So it's, uh, Every time I think of this, it reminds me of a ripple effect. If you throw uh, a rock into a puddle, yeah. like that's you. Mm-hmm. And then it spreads and disseminates. And what you'll notice is the farther away from the point of in, impact, right, the less intense the ripple, right, until it's not impacting uh, that body of water. And in this case, it's our lives. What There's people that are far enough away from us that we have no bearing on, right? right. Um, we might even come in contact with them even semi-regularly, but truly have have no bearing yeah, acquaintances, passerbys, whatever. But yeah. I, I do like that rock, that pebble thing. Both of you throwing the rock in because you're both separate, mm-hmm. and wherever the ripples cross, that's where y- your relationship yep. is. I like that. That's that's a good one. And going with that idea, right? Trust yeah. is the rock. The more trust you have, the heavier the rock. And what, when you drop it, the ripple becomes it's, much more intense. The splash, the ripple. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. And so the benefits are, are, are 
are much, much greater. Yeah. I'm so proud of us for absolutely kind of pulling that out of our ass. Nicely done. Well, it's, 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 it's not just, it's, I like, I like the metaphor of it because you actually think of it and there is a, there is a thought of the butterfly effect. If you, Mm -hmm. if you start losing trust with yourself, that will slowly start rippling through your, through your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you start losing trust in yourself, then your family starts losing trust in you, no matter if that's partner, Mm -hmm. siblings, mom, dad, children, whatever. And then that starts, like you said, disseminating out and further and further until it doesn't really affect the people out here. Mm -hmm but it's taken those other big ripples further and further away from you because that is where that's where it all, it all started is with you. So the people closest to you start to lose the trust in you faster or it's harder to make it back with them. So yeah, to repair that it's similar to the premise of happiness, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're doing the work to live a life that is conducive to your happiness, you're going to engage people from that perspective and spirit, which is going to improve their day and improve how they perceive things and so on and so forth. That I'm a huge fan of the pay it forward ideology it is, I mean, we see it all the time. I, I pushed it, it was probably a month or so ago. There was a, a video that I had posted, which is a guy watching some kind of video. I think it, it was not in public transportation. I can't remember if it was a train or a bus. And he's laughing. And he, initially, everyone around him is looking at him like he's crazy. Like, yeah. it, it creates so much discomfort. People are, like, looking at each other like, what the fuck? Like, this, there's something wrong with this person. Everyone's getting uncomfortable. It, but he continues to laugh. And then he's, like, really laughing. Uh, and what you notice is there's a shift from all those people that were uncomfortable. They begin to grin and smile. And as it goes on the whole place is just laughing Mm -hmm. right um and it's in in the moment that we can kind of get out of our own way and let things kind of be what they are and trust that that's the thing and you 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 hope it is Mm -hmm. you hope you hope that that true happiness is it is but here's my, my cynical side comes around and always goes straight forward to the, <laughs> everybody wants to be seen now. So mm-hmm. I never can trust something like that anymore. Like when it started at the very beginning, mm-hmm. um, when technology first got strong enough that this could happen. Um, okay. I can see that happen, but so many people want to be noticed and so many people want to have that, that I just get so cynical and I go, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to trust every, like I said, there's two things, there's two sides of the trust where I, mm-hmm. at least how I feel self, yeah. close relationships, and then society. The society piece is the one that I trust the least mm-hmm. because and I do not, I, I see how much hate and anger and mm-hmm. ignorance and just overall selfishness there is. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder how can all of this stuff coexist together in the same place and have this happiness be all true? Mm-hmm. Hopefully it is. And I hope it is that it's deep. It's my heart is like Pandora's box at the very bottom. There lies the, the one, the one piece that can help man is hope. Um, but everything else is like, Ugh. it's all the despair, which makes a lot of sense. Cause if we go back to the rock, right. Mm-hmm. When you're saying society, that is going to be the, the area of the the puddle that is farthest from the center, mm-hmm. right? The interesting thing, as you're saying that, that my, my mind was playing on, so we're operating only from your and my perspective, where we're, we're the initial point of impact. Yep. Now, remove that mindset, and we're going to look at it on a macro level. So now everyone is their own point of contact. So imagine having a handful of rice over a puddle and you just throw it up. Right. Right. So every little, uh, I almost said kernel of rice, every little piece of rice that hits the water creates its own little ripple. And all of those are going to intersect and interact and Mm -hmm. uh, some will cause damage to the other. Others will kind of push and push others along, right? It's going to impact in a whole lot of ways. 
I think that is a really good uh, premise of a mindset of the the chaos of trust, right? So some is going to hurt others, right? So some of those actions are not authentic. They might be staged. They might be for attention or their own agenda, which may or may not be um, to to be helpful, right? It could, they might not be pure. Yeah. Yep. The but at the at the end of all of that, if we take now and evaluate each piece of rice, each person, it is relatively safe, not a guarantee, but relatively safe that the people that get close and closer and closer to the point of intact or impact are uh, a circle of trust, even if it's somebody that isn't the healthiest. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cause there's always, there's always those few people that kind of slip in because like mm-hmm. you said, like we said at the beginning, mm-hmm. they know how to manipulate, they know how to find their ways in and, or they just might be somebody who thinks that that's the way to be sure, and might not know about who they really are yet. Yep. Um, so it's, it's not just people looking to hurt others. It's, it could be somebody who doesn't know how to fully interact that way or yep. understand themselves yet. Yep. Um, and I know that's, I know that's where it's where I came from a long time ago when I was, especially, I mean, high school, when you're growing up and stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you tend to hurt people without meaning to mm-hmm. and never really understand the ramifications until much later on down the line. Yeah, it's fair. Yep. So, and it, cause, cause you don't like, like I said, middle school, high school, you don't know who you are. And still most people don't even know who they are you know, mid to late twenties yep. or decide who they want to be. Um, I mean, life is, uh, that's, that is life. There's mm-hmm. all of that discovery and experiences that we have that make and mold us and hopefully continue to fertilize us to grow even the, the hardships. And I, I would argue that those are the most important. And yeah. as we've said so many times, it's through those that we learn to make the adjustments and that mm-hmm. that's trust that is yeah. trusting in your own ability and authenticity to manage something well and gain something out of it to to seek the the message the learning the the silver lining um when we don't have the trust in ourselves to view and see and seek those things the bad things only feel bad right it it creates the a victim mentality of this this thing happened to me without any potential for understanding or growth right um that that takes the that initial uh intimate ripple it's the the point of uh impact i want to rewind a little bit back to the the premise of us throwing rice into the air and all of the rice hitting uh, a body of water right and I'm saying this in hopes to give you hope um, when it comes to society. So if all of those points of contact um, are individual people with a close circle of people they trust and trust them, right? So you have yours, I have mine, we have some overlap, right? Yeah. But there, we also have, there's a lot of people that aren't on overlap. Yeah. So if you have the people that trust you and that you trust, then by definition, um, we're going to say that they're trustworthy. There's an error in that logic, I understand, but Absolutely. For, for intensive purposes of this mm-hmm. conversation. So you have yours, I have mine, Tracy has hers, Rachel has hers, uh, Garrett, Nat, Mason, like all of these, right? I'm just yeah. using names to get, I'm just calling out grains of rice, right? So if that's the mentality that we have, mm-hmm. even and we maintain that even as we go farther and farther and farther away from ourselves, by definition, there's a shitload of people that are worthy of trust. There, there should be. Yes. And like I said, in the bottom of my heart, there is that little piece of hope. That we, get ex- to- we get, yeah. ex- we get exposed because both media, right. Is mm-hmm. going to focus on the ones that put stuff out there that aren't trustworthy right or or the people that are and you just can never tell until you actually meet the and this is why this is why so many people need to stop trusting what's just on the internet yep because 
you cannot tell a person's true heart until you actually meet them. Encounter like, them. Encounter them, talk to them, learn. Like we were talking about the walk a mile in their shoes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can take your word that any one of your friends that you know will be trustworthy if I need them to do something, if I'm in, in that area. Mm -hmm. But Which I would never I'm, do because I have no, friends that would not be trustworthy. Right. And it's, well, I mean, out. yeah. But I mean, if you told me somebody was trustworthy because you trust them, I would believe you because I, we just have that relationship. Yep. But I can't trust them myself unless I've met them. That's how I've gotten to be this over the last 36 years that I've been alive is that okay. I've, I've started, I've started to just say, okay, I, I understand where you're coming from because you have this opinion of them, but I need to meet them. I need to hang out with them. I need to be the one that makes the decision. You can't just tell me that they're trustworthy. I have to decide. Yep. The, I think that's twofold. And I would agree with you is that in that example that you gave, that is more of a display of your trust in me than mm -hmm. your trust in that person. Um, it's almost tr trust by proxy, but it's significantly diminished. So by yeah. me telling you, hey, you can trust this person, they'll come through through you, you you'll trust me in that, right? And you'll have more more baseline trust with them. Yeah, I'll give the them end, more, I'll give them more leeway. Yep. But at the end of the day, you have to have your own engagement with them mm -hmm. to, to know that. And that's how all trust uh, grows, right? So in the moment that you were in need, if you uh, exercised that ask and ask, I'm going to say Bob, right? Uh, and Bob came through with, for you. N now you know, right? So that is initially it's it's faith. Yep. Initially it was faith. Mm -hmm. And then it became trust because yep. you had to trust without evidence, right? Which is that, that faith part. But the moment that Bob came through, now it became tangible trust. Yeah, it was solid. It was mm -hmm. it was something that I can, like you said, tangible. I can actually hold on to it and go, okay, I know that this person is going to be a, a solid, mm -hmm. solid. Um, I, there's just a whole bunch of different things that I've seen get, fall back on people that they're like, oh yeah, this friend's great and awesome. And all of a sudden somebody's out, you know, a car or... Mm -hmm. you know, hundreds, hundreds of dollars and the person never shows back up and they go, well, I thought you said we could trust them. And they're like, well, we thought we could. Yep. Apparently they weren't as good as friend as you thought they were or trustworthy, but, and I've, that's I've where done. I, that's where I have to meet the person because if I don't, um, you could tell me that they're an angel, but yep. you know, never know until you actually get through with it. So yeah, I mean, it's the people are like food, right? I can uh, brag and boast about this pizza, but mm -hmm. until you have a bite for yourself, right? You, you're going to take my word that it's probably delicious and that'll motivate you enough to give it a shot. Yeah, but at the end absolutely. of the day, yep, it'll be up to you and your taste buds. Mm -hmm. And not that I'm encouraging anyone to <laughs> eat your friends. No, no cannibalism, please. <laughs> the, oh. the, I want to flip to the uh, positive, hopeful side of that idea of trust in yeah. uh, a more practical approach, knowing that it, especially uh, now, and I don't mean this politically, I mean this in all life arenas, where trust is a rarer commodity than it used to be. Mm -hmm. What is something that you feel we can all do to try and grow that a little bit and and to do that safely of course to grow trust safely yep to take a chance on trust safely well i mean like like, like i said earlier i i will absolutely believe that anybody um i, I go I'll, I'll just start with this i go i'm going to paraphrase one of my favorite books pride and prejudice my trust once lost is lost forever. Mm -hmm. Like people, I don't feel that way fully. Um, people can slowly win it back, win my trust back if they ever mess up with me. So I just think it's literally, like you said, you place your trust in people who you feel are, follow your core values, mm -hmm. follow, follow your, um, your thought process. And it doesn't have to mean that you agree on absolutely everything because we don't. But I trust you. I've met you. I know you. Um, 
but if there's something that you do that all of a sudden loses my trust, you borrow my car and wreck it and then blame it on something else, then you've lost my trust and it's never going to get back to that full hundred percent again. It'll be, maybe you'll pay me back. Maybe you'll do this. Maybe you'll do that and make restitution, but it's, it's never going to be up here again. It's always going to be a lower place. So I think the one thing that we can do to start restoring trust is give people the chance, mm-hmm. find people that, you know, meet people, talk to people. Don't just sit around and look on social media and go, Oh, I know exactly how that person is because mm-hmm. they're only showing you part of their, of themselves. Mm-hmm actually meet the people, meet the person, um, go out and, and, you know, talk to them about what their life was like, their family, their relationships, you know, what they were like in high school, how they grew, what their job. When you get to know somebody, you build the relationship. And I think that's, what's missing in our society is that we can't build trust unless we meet people. And we're so focused on social media Mm -hmm. that you never truly meet people. You see the goods, Mm -hmm or you see the really bads because that's all people do is there's some people that just complain. There's some people that just show the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But actually get out and talk to people and meet people. I'm going to sum that up by using a cliche that I haven't heard in a while, actually. Uh, Mm -hmm. We definitely, um, I imagine uh, we, have heard this a lot growing up and through school is the whole premise. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yes. Read a couple of pages, get a chapter in and then make a decision. Cause maybe the, the book is awesome, but the illustrator was shit. Or yeah. I mean, our friend, our friend Mason and I both listen to audiobooks when we're driving to work and you can't, I mean, even though I've read the book, I might not like the person who reads it in in audible. So mm-hmm you know, don't just hate the book because of that. You can still love the book. Yep. Yeah. The you content like might the be great and it's just yeah. not the narrator for you. Exactly. And, and uh, I hope that you're not thinking, Hey, this narrator is a giant piece of shit. And like all these terrible things should happen as much as, Hey, this narrator's voice, not my cup of tea. Yeah, no, no, but it, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. Don't judge people until you actually know who they are. Mm-hmm. They could be the most tatted up, the most, you know, loud, foul mouthed person, but I don't know if, if you're trying to describe me. Now. Well, no, 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 no. Cause you, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking of like things in the past. Like the I have, types, yeah, yeah I, I, I have tons of people that go like, Oh my God, they've got so many tattoos. I'm like, yeah, but they actually are really nice people. The, mm-hmm. They will, they will give you the shirt off of their back. And I play softball with a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and normally softball guys are known as like cocky, misogynistic stuff like that. But a lot of the guys that I play with, they will just literally hand you the shirt off their back. If you were cold or if you were hungry, they would go buy you food because that's who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, no matter what they look like and no matter how they might speak at certain times, they, when, when you are part of their, like when you trust them and they trust you, Mm -hmm. they will do whatever they can for you. So I love that the I think that is uh, truly the cornerstone of battling all the isms that mm-hmm. our society likes to hyper focus on the and I, I mean, I've seen it personally. Um, I'm not going to say names because it's, it's not my story to tell. Right. But seeing people have uh, r- like r- racist ideologies mm-hmm. and then watching them take the opportunity to actually engage with somebody of a different ethnicity Mm -hmm. and then their mindset begins to shift and then me having conversations after the fact and they're like overjoyed at their experience right but had they not taken the chance and not taking that opportunity to engage their own ideologies would have just perpetuated the same shit that they had always believed to be and well and that's one of the things that i think um people kind of at least coming from that perspective is that those people that you're talking about the ones that understand that oh if i just it, once they've talked to people they start going oh they're not actually not that bad these people aren't this one but these people aren't that whomever they're speaking to sure. um is that they at least they still had a part of them somewhere somewhere inside of them they still had a part of them that believed 
mm-hmm. that was that was open to believing that things could change and be different. Yep. There are some people that you probably meet up with that you can tell after one discussion with them, their heart is not going to change. They are just yep. stuck when they are. They're going to go right into that wall, no matter how hard they drive it and just keep going, keep going, keep going until their gas runs out, their tires burn out or their engine blows up because they can't move. It's like, seriously. Well, so today is not the day they're taking a detour. That's for sure. Exactly. No. Yeah. So it's, it's just kind of, it's sad because I, I really have, I'm happy for the people that do that, that they're able to talk to the to different people that they might have bias against, or mm-hmm. um, like you said, those isms against mm-hmm. and just go, Oh crap, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. But they had that somewhere in here. And it's usually not zero to 60. And right. by, by that, I'm going back to the rice. Right. Yeah. So we had like the metaphor of how all the rice impacts each other. And I had mentioned that there will be ripples of one grain of rice that actually pushes another uh, ripple of another grain of rice forward. So in this example, it was through proxy of other people where it daisy chained um, connection of relationships. And what that does is it slowly grows trust and intimacy to the point where they then will allow themselves to be in that situation. Right. So those people wouldn't have done that on their own, at least right. not when I had met them. No, but- because they're so sto- they're so against it at the time. But mm-hmm. the fact that when you did that with them, when you spoke to them, when you had that discussion with them, that they were able to open up and, and start changing their mindset about things. Mm-hmm. That just shows me that they're not as. They were farther along that. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's what I was looking um, yep. for. They're, they're not as stubborn and they're not as cold hearted as people probably thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm being fair, most people aren't, mm-hmm. but they will do the, um, the chameleon effect. Mm-hmm. And well, because they, yep, they surround themselves with certain people of certain ideologies, yep. they go with it. But if you change the environment, right? Which is how this daisy chain works. Yeah. That begins to shift and they become more willing to not change an ideology, but to challenge it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean that in, I have so many clients where they operate in their own bubble and the yeah. ones that can acknowledge that that's what they're doing is where their growth become, become begins to perpetuate. Right. Yeah. But the folks who who want to stay in that bubble, which is very enticing, right? Mm -hmm. It is very comfortable. You're having people that are constantly confirming your own bias, right? It's very, very comforting. It is very enticing. It's seductive. Absolutely. Going outside of that, there's a giant risk. And we don't live in a culture where those risks are celebrated. Shit, we talked about celebrating failure not that long ago. but as in, I mean, this is kind of, uh, I'm not going to say the role, but a role of the counseling relationship, right? Is it's getting people to understand where they are in their perspective and how it is or isn't helping them and the things that aren't, you begin to change um, and, and acknowledge those things, which yeah. again, all comes through the idea of trust. If I'm being honest, counseling won't work if there's not trust between that therapist and the client no. and it goes both ways where there's yeah. i mean you know it and i know it both has the idea of rapport so mm-hmm. it's a it's a true statement because it, i see so many uh, especially in the middle school arena where um students come in and they go they'll have their heads down when they're walking through the hallways mm-hmm. because they just expect nobody to care when they get into seventh and eighth or sixth seventh and eighth grade because it's not elementary. They're not with one teacher every day. They're not in the, they're not in this small little school where they've had all their friends for six years. They're in a bigger school with maybe two or three other elementary schools combining. Um, and when you start seeing, like when you say hello to them in the hallway and asking how their day is, like you said, I don't, if I don't, if I ask it, I want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And when they start figuring out that there's people in that school that care about them, yep they start to go, Oh my gosh. And they start to trust more Then they start to open up and they can be themselves mm-hmm. and they start being better for who they are. Um, it, it's, it is really interesting to see that, that they can kind of change once that, that switch is flipped almost. Yep. 
the i mean again it's you're going back to that idea of paying it forward right mm -hmm. so in that sense it, it's paying investment that like we're not just trying to grind this out like there there is value in you right mm -hmm. there's value in me and when, when we can choose to engage and utilize that again not judging a book by its cover just because mm -hmm. you're in a different setting because you are in sixth grade you're in a new school you don't know barely anyone right? You have a bunch of different teachers. So uh, all of those things can become very overwhelming, but because through your inexperience, through the, sorry, through the kids inexperience in that moment, all they have to judge on is the cover, yeah. right? So let them, let them get uh, a few months in, right? Where they're getting to know the teacher a little bit better and understand how this whole thing works. Um, and they be get, they get a little more comfortable and holy shit, um, Mr. Squares is investing. He's actually asking, he's like cracking jokes to me. And then that becomes reciprocal. Right. And then mm -hmm. you get to, to know your students and because you value them, they value you and you can have authentic conversations, which is where some serious learning can happen. Right. Yeah. Um, the, again, all of that, everything is at the, the cornerstone of, of trust for sure. Yeah. yeah you, you can't, you can't have students learn from you if they don't trust you. You can't Not have, you, easily. no, you can't, uh, and you can't have, you can't have t a, a partner love you if they can't trust you or if you can't trust them, um, at least fully. You can, you can have those emotions for them, but love isn't just that one thing, you know, it's, it's all the things put together, like what they do, say, and act, yep. or all the other aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So you have to look, I absolutely agree with you. You have to have that cornerstone of trust. And if you don't, then there's not really anything else that's needed from that. Yep. yep. If I can't trust you and you can't trust me, then let's not fight each other and let's just go our separate ways. And, yep. you know, let, let the old saying, like you, like you were saying, we've brought up old sayings, let bygones be bygones. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Just go, go different ways. Yep. The, I'm going to kind of paraphrase what we were talking about and See? get back to that practical idea that we're chatting about. Um, is that for ourselves, you and I personally, but also for anyone uh, listening or watching, is as we move forward, uh, be a little more intentional to read a couple of pages, uh, read a chapter or two before we jump to judgment. And I don't mean judgment just in the negative sense. I also mean in the positive sense, right? Um, to engaging and taking the time to understand somebody and where they're coming from and their potential impact on us and us on them. Um, and hopefully we'll develop uh, a couple, even if it's just one more relationship at uh, a greater depth or intimacy, I think is, I'm mean, just one of those is reward enough, uh, I would argue. Absolutely. Thank you so much, bud, for joining me this afternoon. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Always. Of course, for everyone listening in, uh, make sure to get your votes in. You can do so at j-tm.community slash podcast or join us uh, on Facebook. The voting goes live there. It's super, super easy. You'll see the post. You click a button. It doesn't take you anywhere else or anything. It submits your vote immediately, or you can click uh, to add your own topic, and folks can vote on that as well. Um, send us your stories, your questions. Again, if we get enough uh, inquiry there, we'll do a Q&A episode. That is both Will and Mai's hope, because uh, we think that would be super fun to totally. be able to do that. Not that we believe we have the best answers, but I think it would lead to a lot of uh, interesting dialogue, at least for you and I. I mean, yeah. people listening would, <laughs> might not have any interest, but I think it would be fun for us. I, I, just, I, I just hope that everybody takes it and, and goes, hey, you know, Mm -hmm. these guys, these guys are just sharing their lives and that's how, that's how we do this. Yep, just if Mel, Melvin, yeah. Melvin shares his life and all the things <laughs> that go on with it. And he brings people on that are willing to do the same thing because that's what we want for this group is to just be like he was saying earlier, transparent, be open to new things. Heck you can learn a lot from the, the, the stuff that we say good or bad. So yep. have, yeah. a, have a, with, with what you will. So. It's definitely the idea of we can get along, have really good dialogue and not have to agree on, on everything. And I, I absolutely love it when folks don't agree. 
Uh, and one, when they express that they don't like you did uh, earlier, and then being willing to, to have that conversation, if we were all willing to do that and had the desire for that, this whole thing and not this isn't the company, but our world would be in a much, much better place uh, it would be. in it so would many be. ways. Calm, calm, respectful, mm-hmm. um, just exchanging of words and thoughts. That's what that's what it's supposed to be about. Mm-hmm. You know, not nice. yelling. You can't you can't get things done by yelling and screaming. Um, more people tend to turn away from that. So, yep, that's true. At least at, at least they used to. Without the yelling and screaming, yes. if you want to touch base with me, you can also do so uh, for advancement advising through j-tm.community slash podcast. There's a bunch of other resources there. Again, the social media is uh, up there. And lastly, if you want to check out the TikTok, again, not necessarily the videos that we put out, but the liked videos um, have those amazing content creators for that human connection the motivation, the inspiration, and my favorite is the humor. I hope you all enjoyed uh, today's episode, and thank you so much for being part of a community where you belong.